All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to ISPE's first virtual boot camp webinar. Today's topic is Design and Construction of Mechanically Stabilized Earth Walls, presented by Alexander Abraham. My name is Ariana, and I'm the Education Specialist with ISPE. So if you have any questions regarding today's webinar, our virtual boot camp, or any other education programs, please feel free to reach out to me. I will um, go ahead and type my email in the chat box to keep it convenient. So if you need to reach me, you can just go ahead and click on that. I just have a few quick announcements before we get started. First, the handouts for this presentation are available in the handouts section of your toolbar. It's going to be on the right-hand side. Um, of course, they're also available on the website. The link to the quiz can be found on the same web page as the handouts. So I just ask that you please complete the quiz by this Friday so that I can email you your PDH certificates in a timely manner. If you have a question for Alexander at any time during the presentation, please type it in the questions box in your toolbar, which can be, oh, and um, I will go ahead and read those out loud as we go. I think that's all I have for now. So with that, I'll go ahead and hand it over to Alexander. Thank you. Um, thank you for this opportunity to present and talk about uh, mechanically uh, stabilized earth walls to this ISP group. Um, during this uh, presentation, I just give me one second. Uh, Just give me a second. I just I'm having some technical difficulty. Just give me a second. Alexander, are you having issues um, yeah, moving the your slides? Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, okay. okay. Are you are you on um, your PowerPoint or is it the PDF? I'm on the PowerPoint. Yeah. Okay. Um, Try to exit out of that PowerPoint and restart it. Oh, okay. Maybe uh, okay. exit out of full screen and try to start the slide again. Okay, sorry about it. Okay, okay, try your arrow keys. All right, perfect. Okay. Um, to give you an idea how the MSC wall works, let's say if you have a pile of sand and if you stand on the top of that pile of sand, that pile of sand will collapse. Instead of that, let's say you take the same, you know, sand and uh, place Find needles within that sand and build it in layers. And if you stand on the top of it, it will not collapse the way it did before. So this concept of uh, reinforcing sand with pine needles can also be used, let's say, to reinforce pebbles with thin sheets of paper where paper acts as the reinforcing element or the tensile element. So this concept of reinforcing sand with a tensile element can be used for building um, retaining walls where the sand is uh, reinforced with steel straps and provided with a concrete facing panel. So this is the uh, basic principle behind MSC walls. This 
technology has been used for building very tall walls such as this 90 foot high wall that is shown here on this picture that was built for the SeaTac airport in Seattle, Washington. I will quickly go through the various components used in an MSC wall. We use a two inch wide, four millimeter thick a steel strap that is galvanized. Then we provide precast concrete panels of various shapes along the face of the wall. And then we use a select fill with no more than 15% on the number 200 seats. So 15% ensures that it behaves more as a granular material so that there is sufficient friction between the steel straps and the sand. It is this friction that keeps the wall vertical. In addition to that, we also make sure that the, the sand is very durable and that it has got proper pH and resistivity, resistivity values so that the steel strap will not corrode in a way that is detrimental to the design life of the structure. So those are the main components, the steel straps, the granular backfill and the facing element. They all work together to build this wall. How this process is done in the field. First, we pour a leveling pad, an unreinforced concrete leveling pad. Then the precast panels are set on the top of the leveling pad. The bottom row of panels are braced, but after the bottom row is placed, the next rows can be placed in between the full and the half panel. The joints are staggered, so it is a self bracing system. You don't need any bracing after the first row of panels are in place. Once the panels are in place, we provide a geotextile fabric along the joints and held in place with glue such that water can flow through the joints. But at the same time, it prevents the granular fill for leaking out through the joints. Once the strap is in, then we can place the straps and connect it to the panels. Uh, it is a bolted connection for the reinforced shirt system and similar other connection systems are also available. And this process is repeated by bringing in more fill and compacting it until the wall reaches the full height. Generally, we use a smooth drum roller a six three foot away from the face of the wall and a walk behind roll up right along the face to maintain the proper alignment of the panels. And this process is completed until the wall reaches the full height. And once the wall reaches the full height, a coping or a barrier can be placed on the top. So that is the uh, construction process in a nutshell, so that how the wall can be built with these three components. Now, how is the wall designed? A permanent MSC wall, such as used for the Illinois DOT, will be designed for a 75 year design life. In the case of the Illinois Tollway, the bridge abutments shall be designed for a 100 year design life. And the straps are designed such that during this design life, the allowable stress is within 55% of the yield strength. That is the basic uh, feature, the requirements for the design of the MSC structure. Now, regarding the external stability of the MSC wall, 
uh, MSC supplier will do the overturning, sliding, bearing pressure calculations, but the geotechnical engineer will do the bearing capacity, total settlement, global stability, and so on like that. So in the case of uh, Illinois DOT project, the DOT will be responsible for the global stability of the MSC structure. And the MSC supplier will be responsible for the internal stability. So a, a supplier will get involved only after DOT has confirmed that the structure is globally stable. Now, uh, one of the key items in the performance of the MSC wall is its ability to handle a uh, settlement. If you are using a standard MSC wall using the most prevalent 5 foot by 10 foot recast panels, it can handle as much as 6 inches of settlement, 6 inches of total settlement without any special design features. That is because of the open joints between the panels. If you are expecting more than six inches of settlement, or let's say that you are building a wall where the bearing capacity is not sufficient, one of the options in Illinois is to use a lightweight fill with 35 to 40 PCF so that the applied pressures are a lot less than the what is the soil capable of uh, handling. Another way of taking care of um, total and differential settlement will be to build the wall up to a certain stage and allow the um, wall to settle and then come back and finish the wall. Another way will be to uh, place a surcharge embankment on the top of the MSC fill so that most of the settlement is completed before you do the top wall structures such as the barrier, the drainage structures, inlets and so on like that. So this is one way in which you can construct the wall in two vertical stages so that the wall can handle the uh, settlement without having any um, cracking of the panels or so on like that. Uh, another way definitely will be to provide some sort of a ground improvement such as you know stone columns uh, so that the soil is improved before you build the MSC wall on the top. Another option will be if you are expecting a lot of differential settlement to build a wire faced wall first and allow the settlement to complete and once the settlement is complete to come back and attach precast panels to the wire faced wall so by doing this the effect of the differential settlement on the facing panels is reduced um, generally an embankment can settle as much as it wants but the problem is there's only a three quarter inch joint between the panels so the amount it can move is somewhat limited that's why if you are expecting a lot of differential settlement you have to build a wire faced wall first and then attach precast panels to that now that's kind of regarding the uh, geotechnical issues regarding um, civil design one of the questions that generally come up is what if you have a pipe that runs parallel to the wall? If you have a pipe running parallel to the wall, it's very easy to skew the strap with a 15 degree skew above or below the pipe. As long as the pipe is located some distance away from the front face of the wall. Larger the diameter of the pipe, more the pipe needs to be moved away from the back face of the panel. If you have an inlet, inlet structure, a similar system can be used using an angle iron so that the angle iron will kind of bridge across the inlet and the straps can be provided on either side of the inlet. So by doing this, 
by doing this um, uh, in connection, it is possible to move the strap on either side of the inlet, inlet and then complete the MSC construction. Uh, one of the most uh, popular applications for MSC wall in Illinois is basically for abutment structures. There are two types of abutments, the true abutments and the false abutment. In the case of the mixed abutment, uh, the bridge is supported on the piling and the MSC wall is constructed around it. The other option will be a true abutment where the abutment seat will be resting on the MSC fill. So uh, in the case of the uh, false abutment, the piles are driven first and then the MSC wall is built around the pile and it reaches the, uh, full, the required full height. Another option will be to separate the bridge structure from the MSC wall. In this case, as you could see, um, the bridge support is in front of the wall and the wall just acts as a curtain that uh, takes care of the earth pressure loads. If you have a narrow size structure, the straps will overlap from either side. So the standard design process is to provide a strap length of 70% of the wall height. See, if you don't have that 70% room available, such as this um, uh, bike path, in this case, the straps from either side will just overlap and provide the sufficient stability. Because in this case, it is reinforced from both sides. So even with the shorter strap, it will uh, perform very well, as long as you check the bearing capacity of the soils to ensure that the soils below it can handle the load from this wall. Similarly, if you have two parallel walls and then an abutment that forms an acute angle with the uh, one of the walls, then it is possible to tie the straps from either side to create what is like more like a bin wall. So it is designed for the at rest earth pressure condition. That is shown on the next figure. As you could see here, two walls are coming together, forming an acute angle. In the case, within the limits of that uh, bin, limits of that um, acute section nose, the straps are tied to each other. Uh, the second next situation is what is known as a, a true bridge abutment. A true bridge abutment is the one in which the abutment seat sits right on the top of the uh, MSC fill. Uh, in this case, the load from the bridge is distributed into the MSC fill and the straps are designed to carry the additional load uh, from the bridge. So the bridge seat will be sized in such a way that the maximum pressure from the bridge seat to the MSC field is limited to about uh, 4 KSF. This is uh, one example like that, the Umden Stock uh, Road over CCNP Railroad in Kane County, Illinois. It's a single single span, um, precast on the piece concrete uh, uh, beam bridge. As you could see, um, in this case, the abutment seats are sitting right on the top of the uh, MSC fill. This is another true abutment like that. This is the 127th Street over the metro lines in Blue Island in Cook County, Illinois. Again, um, this was an existing structure, steel structure that was replaced by an MSC wall up to a certain span up to the ra railroad. And the steel bridge again supported right on the top of the uh, MSC uh, wall, but it's a multi span bridge. What I'm showing is one abutment, and there are several spans uh, beyond that until you reach the other abutment. So, those are the uh, uh, most uh, typical applications 
uh, another application that has become more useful these days is no, what is known as a short MSE wall. This is a situation where you do not have sufficient room to provide wrap length that corresponds to 70% of the wall height. In this case, the cut section is maintained using soil nail walls. An MSE wall is built in front of the soil nail wall, and a connection is made between the MSE straps and the, the soil nail. So this is a way of building a MSE type structure in locations where you don't have sufficient room to place the straps. So this can be done in several cases. One that is shown here. Let's say if you have an existing wall and if you need to widen the roadway just by one lane width. So in this case, the wall height, let's say is 30 feet. You don't have the room to put that 21 feet long strap that corresponds to 70% of the wall height. In this case, the straps from the new wall are attached to the existing wall. Um, so far in my presentation, I presented about straps using a galvanized steel straps. Uh, galvanized steel straps work only if, if you have soil that will meet the proper resistivity and pH values. If you have a situation where you do not have that kind of backfill, uh, another option will be a Geo Omega. Geo Omega is a polyester strap with a polyethylene coating. So these straps can be used in conjunction, conjunction with soils that do not meet the resistivity and pH requirements. But it has to meet the pH requirements for polyester and HDP. This is a construction process like that using um, these polyester straps. But as you could uh, see here, the polyester tend to stretch compared to an um, inextensible steel strap. So in this case, as you could see, we are using those uh, two by fours to hold the straps in tension uh, before we place more backfill. So this kind of make sure that you don't get um, too much movement on the front face of the wall and that the wall can be built according to the DOT specifications. Uh, next scenario will be how you build a wall for temporary applications. So let's say instead of building a wall for a 75 year design life, if you need to build a wall for a three year design life, in this case, instead of using a precast concrete panel, it is possible to use a wire faced MSC panel with geotextile fabric behind it. So this will work the same way as a standard MSC wall, but you have savings from the use of the wire mesh and geotextile instead of the precast panels. This will be a typical application like that where an existing bridge uh, needs to be widened. So what you could see here, you could build the middle portion between the two existing bridges using standard MSC and wire faced on both sides. And once this is done, you could shift the traffic to the central portion and then demolish the bridge on either side. So this will be another case where you need an extremely tall wall but in this scenario we used uh, precast panels along the bottom of the wall and then wire faced panels above that again in the advantage in this case will be uh, to the uh, extent in which you will be saving cost associated with shipping and installing precast panels now regarding the precast panels itself the standard option will be provide a smooth steel plate finish, or you could provide some sort of a stone finish, as you, as you can see here, um, by using different types of palm liner. Along with that, it is also possible to 
stain those foam liners to provide a more pleasing uh, look. You could also combine different types of uh, architectural images into those form liners and also onto the panels to improve the overall aesthetics of the corridor. This is another project like that. This is on I-70, 75 interchange in Dayton, Ohio, where the Wright Patterson, um, the, the Wright Brothers plane is uh, embedded into the precast panels. So um, this plane um, model was created and form liners were made and it was transferred onto 8 to 10, 5 foot by 10, 10 panels, so the image of the plane can be shown on the wall. Uh, another application will be to combine an MSE panel with a sound wall. This is the project in Tel Aviv uh, in Israel. As you could see here, uh, standard uh, MSE panels, which were provided with a sound absorptive material along the face so that the MSE wall will act also act as a absorptive sound wall. So this is how that panel will look like. Um, this was done for a job on a State Route 8 in Ohio. As you could see on the front side, you could see the absorptive material. And once the absorptive material is placed, and then you can pour the precast panel against that. Uh, that, those kind of showed uh, the different kinds of uh, applications. Now I will show a few slides on uh, the performance of the wall. Um, one of the questions that generally come up is, how does an MSE wall perform during a seismic event? Uh, this slide shows the picture of a wall uh, from uh, Turkey. Um, this wall sub was subjected to a 0.4 G earthquake. Um, the East Smith earthquake uh, in Turkey. As you could see, the fault line crossed the bridge structure, so the bridge completely collapsed, but wall on either side, you know, behaved very well. So once again, MSE is nothing but a compacted sand with no more than 15% or number 200 seep. So the shear waves are completely diamond. Um, so there is not much damage to the of MSC structure itself. Another shot of the same image showing that how the wall uh, performed after that uh, seismic event. Another question that generally comes up is what happens due to your wall during an impact? This is a wall that was built in New South Wales in Australia, a place called Robertson. Uh, the wall is right next to a railroad track, and during a heavy uh, tropical rain event, a train uh, hit the uh, precast um, panels. As you could see, um, the panel was slightly damaged, but the bridge on the top was uh, very much intact. So once again, uh, shows that um, the wall was able to absorb the shock from that impact. Um, without any significant damage to the bridge on the top of it, even though the bridge on the top was a, a true bridge abutment without any piling. In United States, if you are building an MSC wall right next to a railroad track within certain distance, you have to provide a two and a half foot thick crash wall. So this shows one structure like that, where the MSC wall is right next to the railroad track a two and a half foot thick uh, crash wall is provided along the face of the wall. Um, second option will be to use a precast crash wall. These are, um, instead of using a cast in place crash wall, in this case, we cast two and a half foot thick uh, concrete panels, and these concrete panels acted as the crash wall as well as the MSC wall above it. So as you could see here, and uh, the casing you see is where the piling is being driven um, because of some negative skin friction and so on like that. The piling was placed within a, a PVC casing, corrugated pipe casing. Uh, but as you could see how the two and a half foot thick uh, precast panels are placed, 
this panels act both as the MSC wall and also as the crash wall. Just want to um, show you a um, few other um, applications that may be of uh, interest to you. Um, these walls also can be used as uh, ring walls to carry um, a large tanks. So as you could see here, in the MSC wall is being built um, using standard straps and panels, and then you should be able to build a tank on the top. Uh, second application will be um, these walls have been used um, for um, uh, crusher walls to um, transport materials. Uh, in this case, um, this MSC structure is designed for the full live load from a fully loaded uh, truck. Uh, this is a structure like that in uh, Jeffersonville, Indiana at a quarry site so that the material can be transferred to the um, processing plant. So several of those kind of um, applications of crusher walls where MSC walls of you know extremely high height, very high height has been built for uh, material processing applications. Uh, these structures um, are also being used for storage of different kinds of minerals and so on like that. The one on the top is a coal uh, storage facility uh, used, built using sloping uh, panels so that coal can be stored um, within that slot. Uh, these panels are uh, sloping panels with the leg instead of the uh, vertical panels. This shows the uh, typical cross section of one of those kind of um, coal slots where the coal is uh, transported and then reclaimed through a tunnel at the base. Another picture of that uh, coal slot with vertical walls on both sides and sloping walls on other on the two, to both sides. These MSC walls also can be uh, designed, um, designed for um, um, hydraulic loads. As I explained earlier, there is a three quarter inch open joint between the panels. Since you have an open joint between the panels, water can transport in and out very easily as long as you use a coarse aggregate such as PA7 backfill with not, many, not much fines. So the water will go in and out uh, rapidly. So the hydraulic head, hydraulic head will be no more than three feet. Uh, this is a typical application like that, where an uh, intake structure is designed for a three foot drawdown. Another application like that, uh, Trunk Highway 169 in uh, Minneapolis, uh, Minnesota. Um, again, um, an existing bridge was replaced by an uh, MSC structure with several culverts, so the water can flow in, in and out from both sides. But the structure, MSC structure itself, is designed for a 100 year design life with the full assumption that it can carry the um, extra hydrostatic load. Another application will be for a um, spillway for dams. As you could see here, um, the MSC structure can be used um, very well for those kind of applications, significantly saving cost for the, storm, for the project. It has been used for uh, marinas and for docking facilities, um, providing a lot more economical uh, structure than a cast in place or a sheet pile wall. Um, another application I would like to talk to you about is the replacement of uh, existing um, trestle bridges. Um, this is a project in um, uh, British Columbia, uh, British Vancouver, British Columbia, for Canadian National for the Ale subdivision. Um, existing uh, timber trestle bridge got damaged uh, by fire. So this shows how an MSC structure was built around the existing um, trestle bridge, thus saving you know, cost and without having less downtime on the tracks. As you could see here, this is the existing um, trestle bridge. An MSC structure was built around it 
built all the way up to the top. And once the MSC structure was taken all the way up to the top, then they could um, decommission each line one by one. So thus minimizing the downtime on the tracks. Uh, this shows the uh, completed structure for the project for uh, Canadian National. This is a similar project in for the terminal railroad. The terminal railroad operates the um, railroad bridge across the Mississippi River in St. Louis. This is the uh, west uh, approach. Uh, again, the existing uh, steel structure was replaced by an MSC type structure. But in this case, instead of using the uh, sand or a gravel that was used on the CN project, this, this one used a lightweight fill as the backfill. So they used the ground improvement to improve the soils below it, like all the cast piles and so on like that. And an MSC structure was built around the existing bridge to carry the uh, railroad structure. This shows the uh, completed structure. This is the west abutment of the Terminal Railroad Association Bridge uh, going in towards the Mississippi River from the St. Louis side. Another application that has, re, uh, uh, has some application is the uh, light rail. This is the Hiawatha uh, light rail project in um, uh, Minneapolis, Minnesota. The Hiawatha light rail connects the Metro Dome from downtown Minneapolis to the Minneapolis uh, airport. Minneapolis airport. Um, this is a typical cross section. Again, it's a standard MSC structure using steel straps carrying both tracks of this uh, light, tra light, rail light rail project. Hiawatha light rail in Minneapolis. This job has been in operation for more than 12 years without any um, um, issues. Um, another application will be MSC wall has been used to carry uh, aircraft loading. This is the Hartsford uh, Jackson International Airport in Atlanta. Another application that could be of use to uh, structural engineers will be an MSC wall can be built as a pressure relief wall behind a basement wall. In this case, instead of using a very expensive cast in place basement wall. Um, is here a base, uh, MSC structure is used to carry all the earth pressure loads. And then all you have to do will be to provide a small facing along the face. The application like that, this is the National Harbor Convention Center in Washington, DC. As you could see, um, the MSC structure is taking care of all the earth pressure loads. And then all you have to do will be to provide a Precast, um, a thin precast facing between the columns uh, for the building. Uh, again, um, various stages of construction of this uh, basement structure, which uses an MSC type structure to take care of the earth pressure loads. That's saving money on the construction of the basement wall. Uh, MSC structure also works very well with different types of uh, Recast arch structures to provide openings. So, in several situations, a, a two span or a single span bridge um, could be more expensive than a recast arch. So, in those kind of scenarios, an MSE wall can be used very well with a precast arch, um, reducing the life cycle cost associated with the bridge. These are typical applications like that. So um, we introduced the product called uh, TechSpan, um, which will be a two-piece arch uh, structure with the crown beam, which can be used very well along with an MSC type wall. So a TechSpan will be in this case a, a two-piece structure with a cast in place um, uh, crown beam. All are precast uh, components, um, but provides a very um, sturdy structure to carry very heavy loads. Uh, what makes these kind of precast structures so efficient is um, ease of construction in this case. Um, as you could see, you, the pieces are staggered as they place. 
So initially, you may need two cranes to get the construction started. Once the pieces from either side support each other, then you can just continue with one crane since the pieces are staggered and the pieces support by itself. So the, here it shows the rapid construction and completion of an arch like that. And then you complete it with a cast in place uh, um, beam on the top. At this point, I would like to show you a few other products which may be of help to you in situations where an MSC type um, structure may not be uh, applicable. One of them will be what is known as a full height um, um, tech wall, which is basically an eight foot wide full, um, full height panel, um, which can be placed into a cast in place uh, footing. So you uh, set up the rebar for your footing and then place the panels and then you can you know, pour the footing. So basically you avoid the cost associated with the cast in place fascia by using a precast fascia along with the cast in place footing. Another option is what is known as a, a double T wall. In the case of the tech wall that I showed earlier, um, the, you first set the panel and then you pour the uh, footing, cast in place footing. In this case, um, the footing is poured first and within those footings, we place a PT bar with an anchor placed at the base. And then as you could see on those pictures, these full height panels are dropped into, into those, uh, through those PT bars, through the holes within those uh, full height panels. And then the, the pieces are, the bars are properly tensioned. As you could see here, once the, once the uh, piece is in, uh, it is properly tensioned so that it has got sufficient capacity to resist the earth pressure loads. Um, another picture showing how the double T system works. So in the case of the double T system, you can get all the footing work done and then you can do the construction of the um, full height panels even when the weather conditions are not so favorable. Another situation like that, which works very well, uh, is uh, what is known as a, a recore wall. And these are the counterfort of the retaining walls, which is basically a precast panels, which has got a box in the back. So what you do is you uh, stack these panels with the box, uh, one on the top of the other. Then you basically, you can fill those boxes with concrete. So it provide, acts more like a shaft behind that those panels and keeps the uh, provides sufficient capacity to resist the applied loads so this is a typical application like that so these kind of panels are very useful in situations where you have no room to place the panels and the rock excavation is right behind the face of the wall The next application I would like to show you is what is known as a piano wall. In the case of a standard MSE wall, the most important one of the cost is the cost associated with a moment slab with a traffic barrier. So if you are designing for a TL4 or a TL5 impact load, and if you have a very short wall, the cost of the barrier uh, along with that uh, moment slab will be prohibitive. In this case, we use what is known as a piano wall, where the precast panel is integral with the barrier on the top, and then we provide lots of straps right below, below the gutter line to take care of the impact loads. Uh, an application like that, as you could see, these are the full height panels. You could see the lots of straps um, tie holders are right you know, below the gutter line to take care of the impact loads. This is a project using that kind of a system uh, in Wisconsin at the um, zoo um, interchange where there were several walls of um, a very low height 
uh, since these are designed for uh, PL4 loading, the cost of the moment slab would have been too much. So it made a lot of sense to use a piano height type of wall to save money at the same time make an MSE wall feasible for this application. Uh, the next one I would like to talk about is what is known as a fan wall, uh, which is not really a retaining wall, but uses a similar concept where we can build a noise wall using modular panels, but the panels are arranged in a trapezoidal, trapezoidal fashion so that it resists the uh, wind loads without having any deep piling, piling of foundations or anything like that. So these are single panels uh, joined together with cables placed in a trapezoidal fashion so that it can resist the wind or a blast load without the use of any piling or so on like that. Finally, I like to end this presentation with a few slides on a T wall. You know, T wall was a separate company until a few years back. Recently, you know, T wall and Rainforest Earth became one company. And um, T wall is very popular among the railroad uh, companies in the Chicago area. So, um, T wall is, um, is a standalone wall system where the stem and the panel are cast as one single unit. And they also provide a lot of room along the top uh, without any stem. So you'll be able to place the ballast layer and the piping and so on like that without any interference with the, uh, uh, without any interference with the stem. So in the case of this uh, tier wall system, if you are designing for the EAT Cooper loading, uh, which is what most railroads are designed for, um, we provide a height of 80% of the wall height at the base and the length of the stem decreases as you go up. Another option will be to use a battered wall so that you can reduce the stem length from 80% of the wall height to 70% of the wall height if you have the room to provide a battered section. Third case will be to provide an inverted wall with a shortest stem at the bottom and longer stem at the top. Uh, this will work as long as the soil conditions are uh, suitable. And if you can demonstrate that this cross section is uh, meets the global factor of safety against sliding, overturning, or a circular slip failure. So the inverted wall will be a choice in some cases where you have a very active, stable, a stable slope, a stable slope, but you have good soils below the bottom of the wall. So um, in the case of this um, T wall, it has been used um, very well within limited right of ways um, without having much disruption to the rail traffic on the top of the wall system uh, adjacent on rail tracks because of its ability to use shorter stems. Uh, these are uh, different examples. As you could see here, this is an example using an inverted T wall. In this case, the existing slope was very stable and the soils below the wall were extremely good. In the case, it made sense to use an inverted T wall and add one more track. Uh, T wall system you know, has been in uh, use for more than 30 years. They have um, um, developed a solution for most scenarios. As you could see, it works very well with the uh, pile abutments. You can uh, provide a um, phased construction as temporary shoring. You can build a uh, back to back walls where stems from either side just overlap. You can even use it as a temporary wall. So there are multiple cases where um, these um, T walls have been very successfully used for different kinds of uh, railroad and roadway applications. If you are turning a corner, um, you just uh, tie the T section from one side to 
to the other side using a proper um, structural connection so that um, it will not be detrimental to the performance of the structure. Pipe penetrations can be properly handled. We could provide an integrated coping. It can also be designed for a barrier or a noise wall on the top. So all these kind of details have been very well worked out for t system as well, just like for uh, reinforced earth. Um, drainage structures can be properly uh, accommodated for. Um, special t wall units can be designed with the perforations and cutouts so that pipes, inlets, and all other kind of strain structures are properly handled. Just like the trash wall I showed you for the case of the MSC wall, in the case of the uh, T wall or in the case of the T wall also, it is possible to provide a two and a half foot thick uh, section along the face along the face of the wall so that it can act as a crash wall and also as a T wall. As you could see here, we provide a baffle two feet behind the panels and you fill the sand behind that and the front two feet can be filled with uh, uh, concrete. So you have a two, foot, two and a half foot thick uh, crash wall adjacent to the track. So in this case, T wall also acts as the crash wall. One of the questions that always comes up is, uh, how easy is it to backfill uh, the T wall unit? Because you have these stamps coming back, how much extra effort is involved um, in backfilling in between the T section? Uh, one of the advantages of the T wall section is uh, you have a lot more wider variety of fill application. Since you are not using a galvanized steel strap, you could use um, other kind of materials also as backfill for T wall units. Uh, you could also use with a lightweight fill, lightweight fill so if you are using T wall in areas with low bearing capacity. It also works very well with any kind of ground improvement system, just like a standard uh, MSE wall. In terms of design, um, the design is very much provided in ASTO documents. The additional load from the train, uh, one track or two track, can be superimposed or added to the earth pressure loads so that the sections are properly designed all the way from bottom to top. Uh, regarding the backfill, you have several scenarios. You have access from the back, access from the fire, so the side or access from the front. So in this case, as you could see, you have good access from the back. So you could use a skid steer loader or a front end loader, um, or you can use, uh, as you can see, a backhoe bucket to fill in between the stems. I think if I move that, uh, sorry, I, I have a small technical problem. If you have any questions, you can ask now, because I think if I move this, um, my webinar, but it gets frozen. So just give me a second. But if you have any questions, uh, please ask those questions right now. So it looks like we don't have any questions yet, um, but feel free to type any in. If you have some, we'll give it about a minute. Yeah. Okay, I got it now. Okay, perfect. Okay. So, oh, we do uh, have a question. Um, I'll go ahead and read it now. Okay. Who is responsible for the global stability of the MSE wall? Geotechnical engineer of record is not listed on the quiz. Yeah, because uh, yeah, the geotechnical engineer of record uh, works as a consultant to the owner to the Illinois DO. In, this, in that case, I was talking about a situation involving uh, Illinois DOT project. Um, the geotechnical consultant is a sub-consultant to the uh, consultant to the Illinois DOT. So within the limits of the contract, it is the DOT who is responsible for the uh, global stability of the structure. So that's the way I, but it's possible that the DOT may transfer that responsibility to the uh, 
geotechnic engineer or rucker, but um, within the limits of the contract between an MSc vendor, general contractor, and the DOT, um, if you read the specs, it is the DOT who's responsible for the, um, you know, the owner is responsible for the global stability. Okay, that looks like the only question we have for now, but okay. like I said, if you have any more, go ahead and type okay. them in now. Um, Alexander, do you still have more to your presentation? Yeah, just two, two more slides, that'll okay. be done. Uh, so, um, okay. uh, so same, I just showed you about the rear axis, uh, so as you could see how it is done with compaction also, same thing. If you have access from the rear, it can be done without any problem. Um, if you have access from the front, there are several ways using Zinger trucks and telebelt trucks and boom excavators to place the backfill from the front. And this kind of shows how the compaction is done uh, in situations where the access is from the front using remote compactors, vibratory plates, and so on like that. In other situations, you could place from the top or from the side of a limited access. As you could see here, here the truck is placed on the top of the fill that's already placed and then you can dump the sand in between the um, open cells beyond that. Uh, this shows again uh, how the equipment is moved back and forth uh, when you have access only from the side or from, or from the top. Kind of again shows how it is filled from the top um, for a flowable fill so that um, the construction can go uh, smoothly. To summarize all this, I'll just show it to you the project, uh, the Metra Inglewood flyover in Chicago, Illinois. Um, this was originally designed as a cast in place wall, but the cast in place wall was value engineered, value engineered into a T wall tie system to carry the um, overloading. This is another job like that in Wichita, Kansas. Again, it's a two mile grade separation where um, T wall was used uh, for the uh, um, um, retaining structures. Third one like that, this is in Colorado. A 40 foot high T wall system was built uh, back to back, uh, back to back uh, for carrying EAT Cooper loading. Uh, shows the construction as you could see 40 foot high, 22 foot wide. As you could see, the, the, they just basically um, overlap the stem from either side. Uh, project in uh, uh, Ontario, California, uh, 350,000 square foot of uh, T-wall structures. Uh, kind of shows the construction process. Existing tracks uh, initially built one phase, complete that phase, move the tracks to the completed phase, build the next phase, wall in the middle gets buried, at the end of the third phase, you have three set of tracks. So that kind of gives you a short introduction to the T wall system and how the T wall system has been used very well for uh, different kinds of uh, railroad applications. Kind of gives you a list of various clients that T wall had had over the years, both from class one railroads and also from local regional railroads. Well, that's all I have. Um, if you have any more questions, I'll be more than happy to answer them. All right. Thank you, Alexander. Um, okay. So I'm going to make a few announcements here. I'll give you guys some time to type in a question um, if you have any. So I just want to remind everyone the link to the handouts and the quiz can be found in the confirmation email you received. Um, we just ask that you take a quiz to prove that you attended this live webinar so that we can get you um, your PDH certificate. I just, again, I wanna thank you, Alexander. I wanna thank everyone else for being here today. In case you're not aware yet, we are having live webinars every Wednesday leading up to the, <clears throat> the SE renewal deadline on November 30th. So you can check out the available webinars on our website and keep an eye on your inbox for announcements about new webinars as they're added. Um, those will be coming from me. So the next webinar we are having is gonna be on 
Wednesday, October 17th from 12 to 1. The topic is email best practices with Melissa Roberts from USI Insurance Services. If you have any questions about a virtual boot camp or you need help registering or any other general questions, you can give me a call at the ISC office or email me. My email is in the chat box below. Lastly, if you or someone you know can't make it to the live version of a webinar, we will be offering them as on-demand products on our website. So you can just check back that following Monday and it'll be up available for you to purchase. As always, spread the word to your fellow P or fellow SEs. Um, that's all I have. Looks like we don't have any more questions. So thank you again, everyone, and have a great Wednesday. Thank you.